welcome to Contra Costa College's Automotive Technology Instructional Video Series. My name is Professor Beatty, and in this episode, we will learn how to resurface brake drums. During the brake inspection, the drum condition is inspected, and the drum is measured with a drum micrometer to determine if there's enough material remaining for the drums to be resurfaced. It's important to note that the specification that's stamped on the drum is called a discard spec. If this measurement is near or over this specification, the drum needs to be replaced. This is not the maximum machine two diameter. It is your service material that often provides this machine two specification. As a general rule, you could subtract 30 thousandths of an inch from the discard specification to determine your machine two specification. The first step in resurfacing is to clean the surface areas on the drum where the adapters will be placed. Also clean the brake lathe and inspect the cutting bit for looseness and for wear. Which adapter to use depends on the type of drum one is working with. Tapered wheel bearing drums require a collet adapters that match with the bearing races. You must remove all the grease from the drum races and hub and clean thoroughly. Select the collet adapters that ride in the middle of the drum races. Hubless drums have two adapter options. Option one is the easiest, but not all shops have the quick adapter set. To use the quick adapters, first one must determine the size of the face plate to use. This plate must fit flat within the drum. Not all shops have the quick adapter set, therefore it's important to learn the second option for mounting hubless drums on the brake lathe. First select the correct centering cone. Ideally the cone fits about halfway into the centering hole of the drum. Next select the correct face plate. That fits on the surface you cleaned for mounting the drum. Note the inside face plate needs to provide room for the cutting bar to clear. Mount the inside face plate on the brake lathe arbor. After the face plate, a spring is required to provide tension needed to center the drum. The centering cone follows after the spring and then the drum which is then followed by a second face plate. The assembly is then secured with spacers, one being the self-aligning spacer and then the arbor nut. This is a left-handed thread. Be sure not to over-tighten. Prepare the brake lathe for cutting by aligning the boring bar. Loosen the boring bar and move the bar away from the drum. Position the drum close to the brake lathe by moving the spindle feed handle all the way out and then back two revolutions. Position the cross feed all the way in to the brake lathe by turning the handle clockwise until it stops and then back off two complete turns. These positions of the spindle and the cross feed will reduce vibration and therefore provide a smoother cut. Align the boring bar all the way until it touches the back of the drum and swivel the boring bar so it does not hit the mounting face plates or the edge of the drum. Wrap the drum with the silencer belt snug, making sure it covers the right hand edge of the drum. Perform a scratch test to determine the drum mounting setup is correct. Turn the brake lathe on, 
Move the cross feed so that it just barely touches the surface of the drum, just a scratch. Then back the cutting bit away from the drum. Loosen the arbor nut and rotate the drum half a turn, 180 degrees. Place your hand at 12 o'clock and rotate it to 6 o'clock. Then retighten the arbor nut. Move the spindle feed handle about a quarter turn to allow for a different position for the second scratch cut. Turn the brake lathe on and perform a second scratch test by moving the cross feed until it just barely touches the surface of the drum. Evaluate the scratch test. If the scratches are opposite of each other, then remove the drum and check the mounting adapters and the arbor for nicks, burrs, and chips. If the scratches are parallel to each other or go in a complete circle, then begin to machine the drum. Machine the drum. Remove the lip from the drum first by hand at the scratch test cutting depth. Once the lip is removed, slowly move the cutting bore to the back of the drum, being careful not to hit the back of the drum. Perform a rough cut, which is removing six thousandths to ten thousandths of an inch of metal from the drum, depending on the drum's condition, which was determined during the brake inspection. This is done by moving the cross feed three to five lines. Then set the speed to fast, or 16 to 18 for drums. Once the drum has been cleaned up, it is time for the finish cut which is two thousandths to four thousandths of an inch, or one to two lines on the cross feed. Turn the speed to slow, or about four for drums. Use sandpaper after the finish cut to achieve a smooth micro-inch surface finish. Then clean the machine surface using warm soapy water. That's the end of this episode. I hope you have found it informative. Please don't hesitate to check out more of Contra Costa College's Automotive Technology Department's instructional video series.